Hunger Strike? Well, I wasn't planning on it, but I guess we could. Uh, okay. That's, uh, uh, as you know, uh, glad to be here, John. Uh, welcome, audience. Uh, I'm uh, the producer of a show uh, that's in the works. It's uh, called Reality TV Program. Uh, you can uh, get to it by www.realitytvprogram.com. And, uh, well, uh, I guess I, I'm a bit uh, shaken up, I guess I can say. Are because, you? Are well, you? just this, la this last week has been a, a, a very uh, intense week because I didn't realize uh, the plot came out uh, with uh, what I'm doing. Uh, uh, just for your viewers that don't know, I'm uh, basically uh, going to take uh, five individuals that are homeless living on the street of Asheville or in Buncombe County, and uh, we're going to give them an opportunity. One person uh, will have the opportunity of having his life changed forever. Um, we have a career life coach that's going to work with them intensively, over 80 uh, hours of life coaching for a solid three months, 40 hours in the first month, 20 hours the next two. And um, what's happened was um, apparently this got out. We didn't want it to get out yet. And there's a very powerful group in Asheville that uh, seems to not want to see this happen. So uh, That's strange, isn't it? I, I would think uh, something like homelessness. Uh, somewhere along the line, I picked up some kind of resistance did to, you? to that, too. Yeah, wow. I was here. I was. I was hearing something, okay, and, and, well, and, and it didn't make any sense to me. What? I, I would think uh, any time you can do something good for someone, you can uh, give them a path where now all of a sudden they can get off the street, uh, possibly get a job. That's the motivation. They're going to have a home, uh, and that's where it comes down to. So far, See, I want to sign up for that. Well, <laughs> like I said, all the requirements are you have to be living on the streets without a home. So well, when, maybe, does it, when does it start? I think I can be on the street at <laughs> time. Or you can sell his house. I can, I can, I'll you a, well, uh, we're, we're uh, shooting for July right now. My attorney, uh, uh, All right. Greg Johnson, <laughs> uh, he's um, out of Mars Hill. Um, he, he thinks that he can get this handled within the next month. But back to what you'd originally asked me, uh, they know who they are. I. Two days ago, I, I told them I started the hunger strike, and um, I will not eat. I am just consuming water till this gets resolved. So if it goes a month, if it goes a month and a half, however long it is. So you're going to be much, how long have you been on the hunger strike? Two days. So you're going to be much thinner the next time well, we see you. Well, yeah, in fact, that's what this is for here. Let me, uh, Do you, have you, have you, uh, you've got a scale in there, right? That's, that's right, John. See, okay. you, you are, okay. there we go. This is, all right. This is going to stay with you so that nothing can doctor it. I want an official weigh-in. Now, two days ago, I was weighing 222. I don't know what I am. I haven't been on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know. Right. Now, was this calibrated by the uh, Division of Weights and it, Measures? From and health o -meter, I it guess. It was, yes. Then it was um, calibrated. Okay. It was, okay. It's a Sunbeam product and made in okay. China, hopefully. Okay. Uh, I know uh, earlier today, I think I'd heard uh, some bashing on China, which uh, probably deservedly so with well, anyway, chicken food and stuff. Okay. Well, but, now, uh, are, you, are you able to get the, the cuffs off of well, yourself? Yes, I, I, what, I, what I you, thought you might need what this you, to lock it up somewhere. What so you that, don't know is how much racket that thing makes oh, sitting on the table. I, I, I'm sure it's brutal on you, so we'll get that. We'll get rid of that right now. Okay, that helps a lot. Uh, so that's got to be handcuffed to you. Well, and uh, <laughs> no, I, if you don't mind, once we weigh in, uh, I'd like it in your possession because I want this, heaven forbid, if something should happen to me in the next month and a half, if, you know, let's say I go to the big, uh, big house up in the sky, uh, I want it documented uh, on the total weight loss. So, mm-hmm. But uh, if if you don't mind, we'll lock it up. You can put it wherever you want. Okay. Are you going to get? Are you going to jump on it now and give us a total for today? Well, uh, possibly. I guess we can do that. Now, we'll, we'll now do what now. did you say That's you were okay. last time? Last uh, two time? days ago, two twenty one. Two twenty one. So, All right. Um, two twenty one. And now, let's are, are, see. are you taking fluids? Are you drinking uh, water? Just water. Just so, water. No, so, nothing else. So. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. I guess they probably can. Oh, they can, but I can tell. Okay, I, I just want, as they say, just want a voucher, I guess. Oops, let's see. Hold on just a second. Okay, so, so what is this for? 
Yeah, right. Well, okay. Okay. okay, he's That's now right. up to 235. <laughs> no, actually, no, uh, it's 221. Now, uh, I was uh, in the buff at uh, 221, okay. uh, so uh, now I have clothes, so I, I think that's probably what's doing it. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll record that again in just a second, and then we'll save it. Um, okay, 221 and a half. 221.5. Okay, so okay. I've saved that. It says 524. I don't know if uh, anybody... Okay, well, close enough. Okay. okay, so we'll lock this back up. You'll keep this. Okay. Uh, I'm going to do the weigh-ins every Thursday, assuming okay. that I can muster up the strength. All right, I think I'm going to do the start doing the Wednesdays again. I was I was oh, okay. I was, well, I was talking with Dr. Dick, and here's what here's what we've come up with. I've taken okay on Wednesday. There's a, the a, the the time space opened up where uh, uh, oh, what is the guy's name who did it last night? Do you know? Tim Peck. Tim. Uh huh. Okay. Tim took it last night. All right. And see. So I. So I. So I took it for next week. Seven for the, to. For the nighttime show. Yeah. But I was talking to Dr. Dick, and I just and and I think that probably they would rather have the the night the night the the later show. I think they want the later show instead of the earlier show. Time. See what I mean? So we might swap on that, and they want and they want to take the uh, uh, big studio. See what I mean? And who's that now? Um, uh, Citizen Speak. Oh, okay. You you know that show. Yeah. You should. <laughs> so, should so anyway, we're talking about that. We're talking about swapping that off and them, them doing a show a little bit oh, later. Oh, that was new. That's new to me. I hadn't, yeah, I, I don't know if that works for you or not. Does I, that, I, uh, I don't know. You're kind of open on your time, <laughs> aren't you? Yeah. Um, I just that's the first I heard of it. Of it so I well, we know. just we just came up with it just uh, like a half hour ago. Oh, okay. What uh, what what you got there? You got something to do? Uh, well. It's a commercial. <laughs> okay. I got to give it to uh, to Don. Is it for Citizen Speak? Uh, no. 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 It's it's a you know I have a production company and oh, I do uh -huh. commercials and stuff and that's what that's for. It's okay. A commercial for uh, one of Don's other shows. And what else you got there? Uh, that is the information that I use for the commercial. <laughs> oh. Okay. And I had video as well. Uh huh. So I just used this to you know put words over top of it and voiceover and uh -huh. things like that. I'll, I'll tell you, I saw your show that uh, you guys did out of, uh, on the regular pay channel, I think it's Channel 11, or that Don Channel does. 10, yeah. Oh, 10, okay. Yeah. Um, with the uh, sheriff from Mecklenburg. Yeah. And uh, it was a, a great show. Is that not and interesting? Yeah. It was a, I mean, fantastic yeah. show. And uh, I'll tell you what, obviously I can tell it's a little bigger studio there yeah. than what you've had in here and your how how you work the cameras and I mean boom, yeah. boom, it's, boom. It's now are you running light. cameras on it's, that one too? Uh, uh, no, I, no, I don't okay. run the cameras well, on that one. They they've uh, I will was, be. It was very good. But uh but they've got uh, another guy up there. Uh, Kudos. <laughs> no, it, it was a, it was very interesting show and hopefully uh, people can see that hopefully they yeah. uh can get it on 20 also if they recorded it because it right. was it was a great show. Very well it, it's it's uh, um, the fact of the matter is on that is he he was up here with uh, the Henderson County Sheriff I, I think and um, and helping them through their procedure um, and and so that's what we're trying to do is is uh, see if we can't you know figure out why our sheriff Van Duncan doesn't want to do something like that I well guess. hopefully we'll uh, <laughs> tonight. Uh, maybe everyone can go because I, I read somewhere they have an open house at the sheriff's department yeah. tonight. Go tell them uh, we want our illegal aliens uh, locked up yeah, and, and sent and, away. And, 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 and the thing about it is, is they'll pay uh, Buckland County uh, that money, and that takes a, a burden off the taxpayers. You know, Mecklenburg County was able to make over five million dollars last year. There you go. And instead uh, of <laughs> cash and, and going yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. <laughs> So it's a, it's a good plan. It's a good plan. <laughs> the host is leaving. He's got the <laughs> my, my. <laughs> uh, we, So are you doing that for URTV or uh, what's uh, that? The your reality. Yeah, show? yeah the reality. This is going to be uh, in case you don't know, and uh, uh, any involvement would uh, be gr greatly appreciated. A uh, little plug. Uh, going to be 100% live, 100% real, reality TV brought to mm -hmm. 
community TV. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually going to have, uh, it'll be a total of about $10,000 in prizes and services that uh, someone that right now is living on the street is going to get. Uh, as I mentioned before, you know, assist uh, getting a, a residence, and that's where we've had resistance. Uh, the, there's a very powerful group in Asheville that uh, right now uh, apparently doesn't want homeless people uh, to get off the street, uh, and they uh, have contacted uh, the, the show, and we will not, this isn't going away, this is going to happen. Like I said, I have an attorney out of uh, Mars Hill, Greg Johnson, uh, that is a real estate attorney, and uh, he's advised me that you know, we, we will, you know, he'll be there every step of the way if somebody tries to mm -hmm. deny us housing, which we're having problems already. We might actually have to buy a house and do something, but we're going to, we're going to take care of it. But, um, yeah, so the, it'll be done in sort of like an idle format. You're going to have, uh, it'll be real time voting. You can actually call eight, uh, they aren't 800 numbers. They'll be like 866, 877 numbers. Uh, vote for the individual that you want. You can uh, email in. Is sort of like a web poll uh, and vote. So it's uh, hopefully uh, state of the art, uh, something new that um, I, I think people out in Nashville will like. Like I said, it'll be entertaining, but yet uh, also uh, very beneficial for one individual. I can't imagine why anybody would, would, would uh, want to butt heads with you uh, on that because I mean, you know. I, I just I don't I don't understand how you know people's mentality sometimes I guess. Well, well <laughs> a, 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 and that comes down to everything. Yeah, you, know, you say how, how can you have someone that is here illegally and uh, you know all of a sudden I, I was reading a paper that the guy um, they were talking to a few illegal aliens and it's like well I'm not happy with this plan. I think we shouldn't have to go out of the country uh, and wait for status and I think they yeah. should change yeah. it. And, and you know what happens if I illegally cross the border over to Mexico? Oh, I go to jail. Yeah, up and check. Oh, jeez. I'm so. I I'm sorry. They've really just. Well, I, I know that I know that you can't you can't right. You can't hear it because I'm you sorry uh, out there, people. But like I said, this yeah, is just, right. I never expected this on all of my wildest dreams that somebody like you said would all of a sudden not want to have somebody come off the street and get helped, uh, but. Apparently, like I said, uh, it, it is, and you had heard of John, I guess, you some rumblings, and um, the, it's it's here, but we're going to fight, and like I said, if uh, uh, the, I guess the hopefully the worst case is uh, I lose 30 or 40 pounds because I can probably use it, but uh, uh, whatever it takes, this w we will not be defeated. We will get some somebody into the uh, uh, program and uh, somebody's going to change their life. Um, Did you fly in from Hollywood just to tell us this? No. Oh, okay. No, I live right here. Oh, all right. So, so, okay. That's, that's the show. Okay. Uh, I have, uh, I ha we have theme music now. I, I heard some sleepy music earlier in the day. Sleepy elevator music. Elevator music. Yeah. So you heard it, elevator so music? If, yeah. if that elevator is theme music, music, I'll pass. You got it going again, don't you? Listen, don't listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's elevator music? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You think it's elevator music too? A little, yeah, sleep, a little yeah, sleepier yeah. than elevator it's, music. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, it's certainly music that I have listened to and and will continue to listen to, but not on a daily basis. Mm, you know? <laughs> to, to me, I'm one that. Uh, it sounds very classical like mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. that's the only genre that actually puts me right to sleep okay so, Mozart. yeah which hey uh, god bless them i mean do -do 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 -do, they sometimes beethoven. knock it out beethoven Ma yeah. bach and yeah. handel and all yeah. of them but uh i don't know why it is and sometimes it sends chills like it really like makes me anxious mm -hmm. so i don't know why uh, everybody else is supposed to well i guess like i said it soothes me sometimes by putting me to sleep but other times it'll just uh make me uh, uh uptight mm -hmm. so well, i guess we will be running from six until nine is that the, is that the well case? it's not it's not all decided yet okay they uh, they i think they want to do three hours that, that would be six to nine okay <laughs> now w what are so, you going to do with so, the class that's in um, there learning On Wednesday? Yes. Well, the, the, I don't know. Is there a class in there on Wednesdays? 
Uh, uh, there is there yeah. no, there is class orientation and there is AGR. Oh and, yeah, uh, AGR is earlier. Is, yeah, yeah. Well, it's four to. F- I don't well, I don't know. This, uh, this may, that's why I'm saying this may not be for sure. I don't I'm, yeah, I may be yeah, wrong I, about all well, this. Well, here's here's my reservation, and I've okay. and I've told Don and them about it. Okay. Um, of using Studio A is we don't have I can't run cameras and and the switcher at the same time in, in Studio A. I can't hear because mm-hmm. I don't know how I set it up. But right. I can't there. And You'll need so one we, more we person. Need another person. At least one more dependable. person. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I want it to be as professional as possible. I just don't mm-hmm. want to fix cameras and be in there switching them. I like to do some zooming and moving around and, mm-hmm. and things like that. And uh, in my opinion, I, I you like it in here better. Stay in here. All right. Well, maybe we will. Maybe we won't um, change it at all. Maybe and, uh, maybe six stay in. Fine. Mm-hmm. Well, I, maybe stay in here and do the do it in the same time period you are doing it. I, uh, I don't know. Or four to seven, yeah. or whatever. If, if you, you know. have one more camera just for certain angles, too, I mean, even though if it's... Well, no, we've that's been experimenting these last couple of weeks with how to position everybody. Right. Last yeah. night, unfortunately, we had uh, Carl yeah, Munpower yeah, yeah, here again, right. and we had, a, and we had an Asheville guy running for president, and they were both sitting here like convicts. Right. Mm-hmm. You need a table that's like a half moon shape or something like that, really don't do. you? We really uh-huh. do. We really do. And unfortunately, my, both of my cameras I'd set up over there. Mm-hmm. And the reason I did that was because the week before, we had everybody in a straight line. Right. So I just assumed that everybody be in a straight line again. Here you go. Um, you want to dump that into the smaller <laughs> teapot? The smaller teapot. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Mumpower, uh, when he was here, then he gets just brick walls behind him, and that wasn't really. Uh, uh, it wasn't very uh, appealing. To the eye, yeah. But, for, uh, but it, it all worked I th- out. I think and, he uh, deserves a little better. Uh, absolutely. Uh, so we're still experimenting with how to seat people and where to mm-hmm. see them. And we, 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 went, we had color over here, and now we're, we've gone away from the blue. What, what happened? Yeah. happened to the curtains? Yeah, I like the curtains. Well, up. I have I put the curtains. Ooh. Can't, can't do no more than that. No. I put the curtains up to... Um, to um, that will spill out on somebody. Yeah. And hurt them. Just be careful with it. Uh, I put the curtains up there actually to absorb sound, to keep it from... Come in. Are you coming to the tea party? Well, All right, well, come on in. I don't have to drink tea, do I? There's Don. Not, well, you, nobody to has to drink tea if there. they don't want to. Of course, we kind of look down on them if they we'll don't. Play. And uh, I'll sleep down in the chair so you can look down on them. Okay. Uh, and, and what we're discussing is, is is our different time slots and stuff. Uh, but anyway, go ahead. Oh, here, I can turn. turn I've got a microphone down there on the end of the table. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. oh how did you set the gain on that? Did you have to set it all the way up? Like yeah, that everything's in that almost, strange? except this one. It's not, there, this something like about that's not right. There's some setting on there that, that I've got to read in that book on something because the gain should not have to be. In fact, when you first started, you had a major hum, major hum. It went away eventually for some reason, but when you first started the show today, but when you when you change the music, mm-hmm. when you change the music, it was humming really bad. One of the mics were. I don't know which one. Probably the key was right. Um, but uh, but it went away. Whatever you did, it went away. Maybe it was just John humming. I uh, noticed you got it? phantom power on. I'm is getting reason you got now. phantom power. Oh, you got phantom power. This, this the, mic is the uses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, it, it don't know me when and I. This is that. the only mic that's not. <laughs> everything else is turned. Almost all the way. Oh, no, not this one. Here. There. I'll turn that mic up. Now, okay, now, now the gadfly has, you got a lot of mic over there. Talk to us. Talk about it. Okay. What, what do you want to talk about? You're, you're strong in the mic. Well, guess what? I just came in. I, I was reading something. I had a phone call before I left the house. Okay. It is in the business section of Asheville Citizens today. Go forth, quits nonprofit board. Isn't that something? Well, you know, I've been pushing, John, for a long time. One of the things I've pushed. And since you were watching the previous shows that I used to do, I think any nonprofit that gets tax dollars must open their books. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it's their tax dollars that goes there, mm-hmm. so they should have to open their. I books. thought that was. I thought it was that way. Well, that's the assumption that most people mm-hmm. make because what happens is they have to fill out a form called the 990, mm-hmm. and the 990 says, "Well, we put a hundred and fifty thousand dollars over here for a consultant, and we put." $100,000 in office expenses. Mm-hmm. Well, what does that tell you? Because mm-hmm. who is the consultant? So I, I'm talking about that we as taxpayers should be able to go to a nonprofit and say, okay, where did you spend this money? Mm-hmm. Now, if a nonprofit gets 10% of their budget from tax dollars, they should <coughs> have to open their entire books, not just the 10% they got from the state. Mm-hmm. And why I say that is because one time in Bunkham County, 
I was looking at a situation, and this nonprofit was using county funds to subsidize a part of the nonprofit, and they said this is going to uh, utilities, and I checked further, and it was going to a phone bill. Mm -hmm. And then I checked with some phone providers, and they said they could provide 20 incoming toll-free lines, 724, for 365 days a year for, for that, that amount of money. Right. And this place was claiming they just got one phone line well, in on that? it was just part of the operation. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll be nice. I don't want to make enemies. Uh, I won't tell you know? who, mm -hmm. who that was right now because uh -huh. – but, but so if, if we had that ability as citizens, all the folks out there that's watching your show, if we had the ability to do that, you have an interest in something. What's your interest in? Uh, everything. But any particular thing, schools or <clears throat> our, our, our economic development, since we're talking about well, education. Education is a big, a big thing for me. See, then, then you could go to... Small child. All right, you've got a nonprofit called uh, Kids Voting that's subsidized by tax dollars. So you could go ask Kids Voting, what do you do with this money? Where does it go? Is it directed to one particular thing or a particular group that is a voting block? And if you had the ability to ask that, then these organizations would be less likely to exert their force to get a political conditioning that they want, sure. right. which is what their tax dollars should be about. And so if they would do that in Raleigh and say that any nonprofit that gets tax dollars must open their books, or even if the county would do it, and God forbid the federal government do it. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Mm -hmm. And then we'd be about the thing that I think, John, you're after, and I know that, that the, some of the, the paid staff <coughs> that you are today <coughs> talked about. You would have total transparency if you did that thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a big push on nationally for more transparency generally yeah. across the board. Would you pour me some out of the big teapot? The big teapot. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I know that's a steeped and it, it needs to be consumed right now. Yeah. yeah. Can, and you, you're not going to have to. I've got just, three, three people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's good. Thank you. Okay. I've got three people here n not drinking tea. Yeah. Well, now he's not a tea drinker either. Yeah, I was going to say no. tough on a, a tea party. Well, I'm a tea drinker, yeah. just cold. Just cold? Cold sweet tea. But oh, you, okay. But you haven't tried. Oh, I have. I tried oh, the first time I just didn't well, make it. Huh? I'm a tea drinker, and I drink it hot, but I drink a decaffeinated. Yeah. Totally decaffeinated tea. This probably doesn't have caffeine in it. It's oh, yeah. come from... Uh, yeah, it does. Oh, does it? I, okay. guarantee, okay. I guarantee you that this is, this is good tea. And or, good tea has caffeine. Or something oh, yeah. some, some, something I close to caffeine. I thought it or something. It does. It comes from Wuyi Mountain in China. And they still put, does it just naturally have caffeine in it? Oh, yeah. they don't put the caffeine in it. That grows in it. Oh, does it really? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't, well, how do they extract it then if it well, naturally water. grows in it? With water. Really? Yeah. They just dilute it. Mm -hmm. they, they, the water washes, they wash it out with, with water. That would be an interesting process to see. Mm -hmm. To take out the caffeine. Yeah, it would be. Well, I've heard they use something like formaldehyde sometimes to get it out. I've heard that on coffee. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, so you're drinking decaf, but you're drinking formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least when you die, you're, <laughs> you're pickled. <laughs> you're pickled. <laughs> Speaking of pickled, you know something that I've got at the house? A pickle? I need to bring some to John sometime. Are, the, are, they, are, are they grape leaf pickles? No, no okay. they are pickled ramps. Pickled wraps. <laughs> Are you a yes. wrap eater? Pickled wraps. What can you do with them? Can you eat them with eggs or what? <laughs> <laughs> Have you eaten any of them? Oh, yeah. Are they good? Are they sweet or well, what? See, one of the things in one of my lives, you know, one of is, lives, is okay. I'm an adjunct professor of environmental science at Monterey College in the adult education program. Oh, is that true now? Yeah. Environmental yeah, science. Environmental science. Yes. Yes. Environ can you explain the vi environmental science to us? Would, well, uh, wouldn't that have something to do with global warming? It would have something to do with global warming. It would have something to do with the ice age. It would have something to do with smog. It would have something to do with overpopulation. It would have something to do with the bears eating. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, bears do it in the woods too. All right. So does that? Are you? So are you? <laughs> sort of an ecologist or not? Uh, well, actually, I've been accused of being. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a phone call uh, about three weeks ago, 
and someone said, Don, uh, you better be careful because somebody is saying you're kind of like uh, uh, Ralph Nader. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I've been called a gadfly, and mm -hmm. now I'm being called Ralph Nader-like. Mm -hmm. I thought. Are, See, I'm in pretty good company. Are you, are you not part of this crowd that doesn't believe in global warming? Well, now, global warming, matter of fact, I've got, I forgot to bring it. Okay. I'll bring it to you. Uh, there's an institution called the Heartland Institute up in uh, Chicago. Mm hmm and they have just published a book with a survey of 537, I think, scientists, 537 scientists around the world about global warming, and they've mm -hmm. broken it down into different questions, so we need to do a show on that mm -hmm. and put that information out because it's amazing what they're finding. 60-some mm -hmm. uh, percent believe that global warming is a reality, mm -hmm. but then they go over and they ask, uh, that if it's going to be detrimental to the earth and about 65 percent say it's not going to be detrimental mm -hmm. so so the mixture of global warming that this survey is showing is basically not letting it be black and white mm -hmm. and it's amazing how it approaches it and divides it but you're an environmental scientist yes, yes. Al Gore says there's not one person that says that well, Al Gore's a lot. <laughs> Al Gore invented the internet, too. Oh, I I, I, I'm just thinking of how, how far along the internet would have been if he would have yeah. had full attention well, to just know. spend on yeah. the internet yeah. and not it would have been phenomenal. Well, well, see, you know. that, that's the thing about science I think that most people <laughs> fail to realize. I mean, I love the debate about evolution versus creation. Mm -hmm. Are you an evolutionist or a creationist? Well, hopefully well, it's a creationist. I accept the fact <laughs> that God did it. Now, how he did it is where we can really get into some wonderful discussion. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, had a, I had a nephew one time came to me and he said, uh, Uncle Don, he said, uh, I've got a high school teacher teaching that uh, creation is not possible, it is all evolution. Mm -hmm. And I took the young boy and I went down to my study and I pulled out a summary of what evolution says about, you know, the primordial life began in this soup <clears throat> on the sea where the waters flapped back and forth and lightning struck it and then it evolved into a one cell organism and the one cell organism, you know, then got up on the land and all this stuff and I looked at it then I walked over and I pulled open the Bible and I said, now read Genesis. Mm -hmm. And do you know what this 11 year old kid said? I'm going to look at the camera when I say this because it's important that they hear it out there. That 11-year-old child said, sounds like to me they're talking about the same thing, just two different ways of looking at it. Ah, the wisdom of 11-year-old. Mm -hmm. What are you saying? Creation theory, right? Evolutionary theory. What is a theory? A plausible explanation. And just like Christianity or accepting Christ Jesus as a Savior is a choice that we make as an individual. It is my personal belief that God created us so that we have the ability to make a personal choice. And this is where we talk about science. <clears throat> we have done something that I can't do in this room to illustrate it, but I do it just in the classroom. We have taken science and we teach it in school as if it's concrete, just like this hard wall here. And when we do that, that's the greatest injustice in the world Not we sure. can ever do to a child. Because as a child, a child is always wondering and feeling and touching and, you know, he touches the hot stove and gets burned and he said, oh, I can't touch the hot stove. I can remember the first time I ever touched an electric stove. Anybody remember that? First time you ever got burned on an electric stove. I've never had one. I don't think I've ever gotten burned from an electric stove, but I remember the first time I got burned in a fire. Well, uh, electric stove. <laughs> See, we used to have a wood stove, you know, the old-timey wood <clears throat> stove. And it would sit in the middle of the floor, and it would get red hot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we had a wood stove, and then we got the electric <clears throat> stove. And everybody was excited about the electric stove. So they went in, and they had the eye turned on. Of course, the eye got red hot. Mm -hmm. Then they cut the eye off, and it was black. Mm -hmm. That's the and black to me meant cool. So I stuck my hand up. I was just about tall enough to go like this. Eat. 
You ever put your hand on an eye, electric eye, with all those little rings in there? Mm -hmm. ah, ooh, and I had little rings, burn rings all over my hand. Mm -hmm. And guess what I learned? Black does not necessarily mean cold. It can be hot. Mm -hmm. So I accept that God created man, and it is possible that he used evolutionary process to do it. That gives a lot of people heartaches. That gives the folks that don't want to believe in God a heartache. That also gives the people that can't accept the fact that God may have done it through evolution a heartache. But to me, it's a plausible explanation. And I believe that by choice. Mm -hmm. But I'll defend that position with anybody that wants to believe otherwise and why I have come to that conclusion. And see, I think that's what science is all about. Just like with global warming. I, my personal opinion on global warming is that if global warming does exist, we are accelerating it a small percentage. But if we know that the first and second law of thermodynamics have existed for eternity, and what are they? <clears throat> Throw it over to you, John. Um, <laughs> there's no such thing as a free lunch. Well, that's probably good. I mean, you're doing great, so you'd enjoy my class. But and I'll... the second one is not even close. <laughs> the first, the first law says you cannot create or destroy. or destroy energy. It's there. I mean, what we use, the technology we use to carry our sound through the microwaves, the technology we use to take the pictures. It's, it's changing energy from one form to the other, mm -hmm. but you cannot create or destroy it. Right. Energy in equals energy out. Ah, but every transformation of energy from one form to the other is not 100% efficient. And that energy is normally given off as heat. As heat or friction and... If it's given off as heat, and I ask <clears throat> that's, a, a, that's energy. I asked a, Na a NASA scientist this one time. Mm -hmm. We know that this world is nothing but a mass of energy changing form from one form to the other. Mm -hmm. You know, the sperm and egg come together, and we eat for, uh, new minerals and nutrients and carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, and we come together. And all of a sudden, we're made, and our body exists. When we die, it goes back from dust to dust, and we go back. But every time it's done, aren't we not losing energy? We are, aren't we? And if we lose energy and it's given off as heat, is the world really getting warmer? It almost has to be, doesn't it? If the first and second law of thermodynamics are true. Now, I've had building inspectors when I work for the county who go out and inspect heat pumps when they're installed say, well, I said, look, in the city of Asheville, how many heat pumps we got? Oh, that's what's yeah. making it hot, all right. Yeah, It does make it hot. Yeah, I, used to, I used to live down in Miami, and I had a theory that that's why it got so darn hot in the summer was because everybody turned on the air conditioner and it blew hot air out, and the whole place got hot. The air conditioning yeah. is refrigerating the inside. It's taking the heat from the inside and blowing it out. So every house out there is blowing hot air. <laughs> hot air. Yeah. And this is a man that knows a lot about hot air. That's right. right. Considered an expert on the yeah, subject. Right. 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 Expelling hot air. Well, <laughs> the expe expe the same thing happens in this room. Uh -huh. If we fill this room full of 150 people, we wouldn't have to have heat. Well, that's right. You wouldn't. And I, and I tell you, that's true because I can, <laughs> be, in my, I can be in my den. <laughs> I can be in my den at home and just me and my wife, and it'll be a cool 70 degrees. And my two children come in, and my niece and my nephew come in. And it'll shoot up to 80 degrees within uh, Especially those minutes. kids start running around having fun. <laughs> within 45 minutes. The air conditioner can't even keep it cooling. And guess what <clears> else <throat> the Heartland Institute had just released? And, oh, this is exciting, John. Oh, it's great. What does a tree do? A tree takes CO2 out of the air. All right. Now, what's causing global warming, according to Al Gore? Mm -hmm. CO2. CO2. Right. Is, is so a tree takes CO2 out of the air, water out of the soil, and puts the C, the H, and the O together and right. forms carbohydrate. Right. And that's called producer. In other words, anything that's green is a producer. Grass, a tree, whatever. It takes the energy from the sun and it captures that and it makes carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. And we then consume the carbohydrate. Now, we Some of it. 
we can be a vegetarian and we eat nothing but carbohydrate. We can be uh, a, a herbivore or we can be a carnivore and eat animals. If we eat animals, the energy is passed through to other levels. Mm -hmm. And every time energy passes from one level to another, guess what? Heat's given off. And we get less of the original sun energy. Now, if you look at that, a tree takes CO2 and water and builds mass. Now, based upon what we know, and you don't have to be scientists to figure this stuff out. <clears throat> based on what we know, if you put fertilizer on something, what does it do? It grows. Why? Because fertilizer has the elements, the chemical elements that it needs to grow, right? So if we have more CO2 in the air, could we grow bigger trees? Yes. As a, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, if we were to take to take out of of uh, the picture, probably the deforestation and stuff that we're we're about and and stuff like that, uh, pro probably we would see that as the CO two increases, that the vegetable mass on the planet increases too. We probably are seeing quite a, an increase in the water in the ocean and stuff like that. I should suspect that there's more algae. And stuff like that, like As a bi biomass fact, should be yes, should be increasing. should be way up. And there's a, uh -huh. a, a guy at uh, mm -hmm. one of the major institutions at Stanford, I think, has done a study. And, and that's says part of what balances the system. The normal the northern hemisphere is actually getting greener. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Ah, so if it's getting greener, is it removing CO2 from the air? <clears throat> it is. Of yeah, course. It would be, and yeah. if it removes enough CO2, could we possibly have a cycle with the temperature back then? Well, no, that's exact. See, that's exactly the point. The point is, is if it could recycle enough CO2. Now, let's see what what is enough CO2. Where is this CO2 coming from? Okay, it's coming from oil. It's coming from coal. It's coming from uh, this CO2 was any was, consumption was, of organic matter was was, ca was captured by organic matter over billions of years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and mm -hmm. was was uh, you know a plant today. If you go out and you get soybeans today, they have a certain percentage of oil in them. And, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Now, when when great forests, of, you know, so vegetable matter create, you know, makes oils and they're carbohydrates. Okay, mm -hmm. and the, and then over uh, billions of years, uh, the 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 uh, rotting material of forests and stuff like that, and uh, eventually have pulled up great resources of oil, mm -hmm. which were created uh, when plants took uh, carb uh, carbon dioxide. Out of the atmosphere. Water out of the and, soil. Okay. Right. Yeah, gotcha. Now, if, however, we come along in a hundred year span, mm -hmm. right, and release uh, mm -hmm. the carbon dioxide <clears throat> that it took a billion years mm -hmm. for plants to take out of mm -hmm. the atmosphere, and if we release that back into the atmosphere, that suddenly sets our atmosphere. Back, bit, it's out of kilter. It sets it back a billion years. Now, here's my point, though. Remember what I originally said. I said global warming, if it exists, mm -hmm. is a natural process, mm -hmm. and we are accelerating. I don't believe, though, that we're gonna that that our that our plants are gonna accelerate in to the to the degree that that in a hundred years they can they can take the carbon dioxide back out of the air that that it took the previous plants a billion uh, years to do that. Is something that is down to where now we are at an opinion. We don't know that. As a matter of fact, the scientists in that study that I had—I'm no, no, no. not calling anyone. I think crazy. it's—I think it's a, a reasonable. Uh, well, I'm not calling anyone crazy. I'm just saying it's a wacko. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wacko discussion. Hey, I don't know how we went from talking about our time slot. <laughs> well, see, that's this is what, I, what I'm saying is when you're talking about fossil fuels, look at this word fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> this this carbon. That, that is stored in fossil fuels. This wasn't done overnight. This wasn't done in a hundred years. No, this no, wasn't no, done in a thousand years. No, no, no. But see, this is one of the things that I see from all my study of nature. Mm -hmm. Everything in nature is in a cycle. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying is, my concern is that we in the United <coughs> States of America are supposedly an intelligent nation. A few years. That's debatable. And we Very are, debatable. <laughs> we are supposedly uh, 
able to sort of work with things that affect us and hurt us. And when China then decides that they want three cars in every garage. Oh, now you're gonna you're gonna now see you something really when, China, when China gets That's into what the picture. What we have got and what Al Gore's well, doing look like child's and, play, and, folks. And, and, and here's yeah. and here's how that's going to happen: is that the more stuff that America ex imports from China instead of creating in America, the quicker the that's quicker going to happen, that's happen because oh, their true. incomes are going to start rising. But the hope is in Paul Newman. And as their income starts rising, they're going to be buying these. They're going to become just like America. They're going to be buying these. And cars. everybody wants to be like us. And, and, and then, already. And, and, then, and, then, and then here's it's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen to that. Let's just let's, let's let's swing that subject a little bit. Here's what's going to happen. We're sending this stuff over to China. These factories over to China to create cheap labor. But what's going to happen when China figures out 50 years from now that that they can make as much money as Americans do, where's our cheap labor going to be? Then what are we going to do with those factors? Move them to Uganda? Oh, no, our cheap labor is going to be in America. No, 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 no. Because, <laughs> you know, so uh, we're just getting stuck. Now we're now all of a sudden China's got us in their hands. Now, well, you know, it, so. if you look at that cheap labor, <laughs> in the automotive uh, industry, like you mentioned, uh, it happened. The U.S. was, you know, uh, basically at the, the pinnacle and then... Japanese labor was much cheaper. Well, it got yeah, much more expensive, and yeah. then it went to the Koreas, yeah. and yeah. Uh, then uh, now it's to China yeah, exactly. and India and, and a real other good places. So there will always be cheaper it's labor. Always going to be cheaper labor somewhere. But but, uh, but how do you just keep moving these factories? Transform. You know how you, and and well, I got a good friend that lives over in Japan, and he's from Egypt, but he lives in Japan now, and uh, and he uh, no he's not <laughs> he's. Uh, He's uh, a good Christian boy. And actually, to be from Egypt to have a good Christian boy is yeah, something yeah, else. But anyway, uh, uh, he, you know, a laptop, for example, we can buy, say, a laptop computer over here, a good one, say, uh, for twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. Same laptop, even though it's made in Japan, is $5,000. In, in Japan? In Japan. Oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> but that's easy because they're giving money away in Japan. I don't know yeah. if you know that or not, but yeah. the prime, the, it's, maybe it's up a half a point or something now, but the prime prime lending rate in Japan sometime back was zero. Well, their interest rates is 0.25 yeah. now. Well, they, so they, that's it's, 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 well, that's, that's, so that's just so it's a quarter, quarter of a percent. percent. Yeah. Well, guess yeah. what? <laughs> Salvation is Paul Newman. Well, no, I'm going to tell, no, tell you something. I wanted to tell you something. One of the biggest problems that you have, they don't spend their money.